What's wrong with me? Could I just be plain stupid? I bet you guys are wondering what I'm talking about. Well, let me tell you. I'm married to my very handsome husband, and we have two adorable children, Jax and JC, who are three and four, by the way. We're very much a happy family. We just purchased our second property in L.A. that I have been wanting forever. On top of that, my husband just got promoted to VP at his job, and I'm so proud of him. Oh, did I tell you I don't work? It's okay. I'll tell you how I got here. I wasn't always this fortunate. I grew up in a very low-income home where we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. Not having just the little things like all the other kids had, such as new shoes or clothes. I didn't always get what I wanted, but I had what I needed, and that was clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, a full stomach at night, and a place to lay my head. When I was a child, I made a choice in my mind that I wanted more in my life. When I turned 18, I decided to go into modeling. I bet you're wondering, how do I look? And don't you have to look a certain way to be a model? <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. I was very petite, about 5 foot 10, with an hourglass figure and naturally contoured face, with green eyes and dark brown long hair. At the time, I didn't know how I looked until I walked in for that audition that changed my life forever. I went in and the man said, oh my God, I think we just found what we're looking for. You are absolutely gorgeous. Of course, I modestly said thank you. From then on, I was booking gigs left and right, from magazine covers to fashion shows. As I was doing these things, people began to recognize me. And before long, I was the ish. After getting out of my car, the paparazzis were taking pictures as I was about to open the door to the restaurant. And this gentleman opened the door for me. As we passed, our eyes locked with one another. It was like love at first sight. In fact, there was so much love there, I wasn't paying attention and my heel got stuck in the door frame. And by his surprise, I fell. Yeah, I said it. I hit the damn ground. And after this, I was not about to go and sit and eat in this restaurant. I was so embarrassed, the ground could have opened up and ate me. As I was trying to get up, he reached down, grabbed my hand, and asked if I was okay. As I looked up to him, with his handsome, chiseled face and his masculine body, it was as if I was in a coma because I couldn't take my eyes off of him. He said, are you okay? The cameras continued to flash as if we were in a club. I said, staring in his eyes, hell yeah. He smiled with his flawless white teeth as if he was also feeling me. He said, I'm sorry, my name is Tom. I said, pleased to meet you, Tom. As he stood me up, I was dusting my clothes off and he said, you are beautiful. I stood there in shock and I said, thank you. I'm so sorry to be wasting your time with my nonsense. He said, no, you're okay. As he rubbed my hands, I just wish we had more time. Do you think you would be able to have dinner with me tonight? I said, sure, why not? But I insist I pay. That's the least I could do. Tom says, no, a gentleman never lets a lady pay for anything her heart desires, as this is my treat to you. I looked at him like a lost puppy and said, okay, how about I pick you up around seven? He said, I said, okay, sure. I looked at him with a smirk and asked him to give me his number so I could send him my address. So as I'm typing my address to send to him, I look up and catch him admiring me, which made me blush and smirk even more. After sending him my address, he kissed me on the cheek and we left. I was so ecstatic, I couldn't wait. I went to my condo to pick out a dress that would complement my figure. So I found this fit and flare Vera Wang dress that was cut out in the back and had rhinestones down the sides and my red bottom heels. I got to the lobby and I saw him standing there with a driver waiting on me. I was in awe. As I walked out of the double glass doors of my condo, he said, wow, you are a sight for sore eyes. As he kissed me on the hand, the driver opened the door and we both got in. The whole drive to the restaurant, we couldn't stop smirking at one another. 
When we arrived at the place, the driver opened my door and I got out and so did he. And we walked up to the door. I didn't see anyone else walking in. And when we were inside, there was not a soul in sight. He says, I hope you don't mind. I rented out the entire restaurant for us because I wanted nothing to take the focus off of me getting to know such an amazing woman. I stood there with my hand over my mouth. He walked up to me and grabbed my hands and said, I don't know what it is, but I feel myself falling in love with you, if that makes sense. And I know we don't really know each other that much, but we have a lifetime for that. And he gets on one knee and pulls out this box and says, that's if you want to. He opens it and it's a ring that could choke a horse. He says, this is not an engagement ring, but a promise ring. A promise to always put you second in my life behind God and to treat you like the queen you really are, to love you unconditionally and give you all of me and more. As I stood there, I was thinking back to what I went through as a child and now this woman that I had become. I said to him, this world is full of so many obstacles and trials. I wouldn't want anyone else there by my side other than you. So yes. So at this point, I'm pretty sure you know what happened. Or shall I retort? The next couple of years were pretty busy. I found out what type of businessman Tom was. After our promise ring date, I believe it was about four years later, we were walking down the aisle with a bun in the oven. I was about seven months on our wedding day and we were excited to have our first child. It was soon time for me to deliver and I had thought about what Tom said years ago as he helped me pack my overnight bag. Hmm, to treat me like the queen that he wanted to love me unconditionally and give me all of him as long as he lives. I thought at that very moment, God has truly blessed me. Our little Jax had entered the world and boy was I happy. As I watched him love on Jax and cuddle him, I knew he was the one for me. As time passed, I was in the hospital for about a week recovering before we went home. It was time, so we packed up everything and off we went. As we drove, I noticed we weren't going the same route. I asked, where are we going? He said, I have a surprise for you and Jax, so close your eyes. I said, okay. I believe we drove on for about five more miles. Then the car came to a complete halt. Tom got out and came around to my side and opened my door. He said, now I'm going to help you get out. He helped me out and positioned me just right and said, now you know how much I love you, right? I said, yes, of course. I don't think you do, he said. I said, huh? He said, I love you this much. Open your eyes. I screamed, cried, and hugged my husband. He had bought me the house I had been wanting for so long. It wasn't too far away from our old home. So I used to pass it every day wanting it to be ours. It was a 10,000 square foot mansion. From the outside, looked like it came out of a magazine. And I can just imagine what the inside looked like. He said, go ahead and see the inside and I'll get the baby. I said, okay, with excitement. As I opened the door, it was like I was walking into heaven. I stepped into a very huge foyer, which had wrought iron staircases on each side and a huge crystal bronze chandelier hanging from the ceiling. It was furnished from front to back, eight bedrooms and nine baths with a pool and a full guest house out back. It had a chef's kitchen, just what I wanted with a huge island and a sub-zero refrigerator. As I went upstairs to look at the bedrooms, they were all furnished from the ceiling to floor. As I went down the hall to one more bedroom, it was the baby's room. It had every stuffed animal that you could think of with silk drapery and a baby canopy bed. I fell to my knees and cried with joy and happiness. As I sat there, I heard him come up behind me and say, do you like it? I said, I love it, but what made you do this? He said, do you remember what I told you when we met? That I would love you unconditionally and treat you like a queen? 
I said, I love you so much, and you are everything I ever asked for, as I kissed him. We had been living there for about a year when I found out that, yep, I was pregnant again. We had a little baby girl named JC. He loved her just as much as Jack's, and that filled my heart with so much joy. I thought, I couldn't ask for any more. It was everything I ever wanted, but you know how sometimes you feel as if something is missing? That's how I felt. I tried concentrating so I could figure out what it could possibly be. So I looked at those nice white walls for a minute. Then I looked at my white pantsuit. Then I looked at the belt around my waist. There it was. A small voice was coming to me. It was faint. But it was becoming clearer and clearer. Then I heard it clear as day. It really wasn't what I wanted to hear. Mrs. Johnson, you ready for your meds? Dr. Tom has orders for you to take your meds for your schizophrenia. Mrs. Johnson, wake up. Mrs. Johnson, why are you staring at me like that? Are you asleep with your eyes open again? That's right. I'm crazy as hell and none of this happened, but it would be nice, wouldn't it, Doc? Tune in next week for more from The Velvet Rope.